Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing the Easy Bank landing page challenge from Frontend Mentor. So we are going to be building a landing page for a fictional bank called Easy Bank. And it's a very interesting challenge and so we're going to be building it out in HTML and Tailwind CSS. So you can go ahead and look for this challenge on Frontend Mentor. You can click on the card and then I'm just going to say restart because I already completed it. So restart which is going to give me access to download the starter files. And I'm just going to say download the starter files. So once the files are downloaded below, I'm just going to navigate into my downloads folder and I'm going to find my easy bank landing page master zip file here, which I'm just going to right click and say extract here, which is going to extract into a folder called easy bank landing page master. And I'm just going to right click and say open with code, which is going to open up an instance of Visual Studio code into this folder. And then I'm going to navigate into Tailwind CSS because that is the first thing that I want to do once this opens up. And you know what? As it opens up, let me also open the design files for this. So let me get the design and let me get the desktop design. You know what? We are going to be building it mobile first. So let me get the mobile design. As we begin, then please subscribe to the channel if you're not ready and ring the notification bell so that you're always going to be notified of when I upload a new video. So I have my mobile design open here and Visual Studio Code is also open. So I want to maximize this first of all and then using Ctrl and J, I'm going to open up my integrated terminal. So using Ctrl and J, it opens up my integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code into this folder. And inside here, I want to install Tailwind CSS. So let's go ahead and navigate into the Tailwind CSS website, the installation website right here. And we're just going to be using the Tailwind CS CLI and I'm going to first of all go ahead and say npm install this one. So oops, that's the wrong thing. So copy this. And then inside our terminal, we're just going to paste this in and let this run, which is going to create a node modules folder and install Tailwind CSS as a dev dependency. And I've just remembered that let's also go ahead and inside our workspace, let's create an index.css file. So index.css. And then let's also create an index.js file and our index.js file is going to be for our menu toggle which we are also going to create for now it's just going to be empty and then let's go ahead into our index.html as this still installs as it still installs and then let's go ahead and let's grab this attribution cut it out and then let's paste it inside our css oops i did something wrong cut it out and then paste it here okay and then let's remove this and then let's see let's see what we need to do we need to go ahead and link our style sheet on the bottom so right before the closing body tag i'm going to link my style sheet so let's go ahead and say link the script source set this equal to oops what is happening dot slash index dot js and then close it out and then let's change this into our website so https oh what's the formula for it okay <laughs> i forgot how to write a link okay and then change this to my name okay fantastic and then i don't want to save this yet because if i save it then it's going to format and it's really hard to read this so i'm just going to uh control and z which is not going to format it and then we're going to build out this structure first of all in html and then we're going to style it out in our css and not even not even in our css really but like um using tailwind css the reason why i have this index.css file is because tailwind is going to look for this file as it compiles into the output file so now that this has finished installing let's go ahead and copy this next line so copy and paste And then once that runs, you can see that it creates a Tailwind config file. So I'm going to open this file and then let's go ahead and copy this line right here. Copy this line and then inside the content, let's paste it in. But we are going to remove this part right here. So our entry file is going to be the dot slash and then all the files that have an extension of HTML and JS meaning all the HTML files that we're going to have inside here, which is for this project, it's only going to be one, but if you're going to have multiple, 
then this is going to work for them as well just make sure that this path links to the correct folder and the reason why i've removed the source folder the reason i've removed this part is because we don't have a source folder in our workspace so let's go ahead and save this and then the next line that we need to do is we need to copy this into our index.css file now notice here it says input.css this is very important we have called ours index.css so always make sure that you are referencing the files correctly and then we can save this and add a space here and then now we can run this part here which is going to create our uh, our output css file and let me just copy this and notice how this is accessing the source and input.css remember we don't have this file however we do have the dot forward slash index.css so we're going to change this part so we can just copy this and then as we paste it in it's going to run but it's going to give us an error and then we're going to correct it so let me just check if there's anything else we need to do we also need to link our output file once it creates the output file okay so you can say you can see it says that the source input does not exist so i'm going to hit the up arrow key on my keyboard which is going to bring the last command that is run and then i'm going to change this into index.css so index.css and then remove this source folder meaning it's only going to remain dot slash index.css and then the dist output css file is going to be created when this is run so let's run it and then let's see and you can see that it creates a dist folder here with an output.css file and the output css file is the tailwind css file you can go through this if you are interested in it and then now what we need to do is we also need to link this output css file inside our index.html so i'm going to say link this into dot slash dist for slash output.css and then let me just check something i'm not sure whether we need to link our index.css file so let's just uh you know what i can save this just to test something out and then i'm going to be using an extension called live server which launches a local development server for me and you can go ahead and check into your extensions you can search for an extension called live server if you don't have it installed that is and i mean you don't have to use this specific one but like i just like using live server okay so once that is done then let's go ahead and let's say right click and say open with live server we should open a local dev server for me right there and you can see that this is all the text that we have in our application so i'm going to place this to the right and then i'm going to place my code editor to the left and then just to test whether all of this is working i'm going to go inside the body and give the body a class of padding all round of eight to see whether it works and there we go so it is working correctly now what i'm going to do is i'm going to undo everything i'm going to undo okay not everything but like most of it so that this goes back to the format that it was in because i want to structure all of this out before we build it before we like we begin to style it so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to grab everything inside here all the way up to right below the footer before the footer right before the footer cut it out and place it inside a main tab like so and then we're going to go back to the top and then we're going to grab this part let me just check how this design looks next generation banking is the h1 so this must be the header so i'm going to cut this out and i'm going to place it inside a header tag like so and then inside this header we need to have a div which is going to be our logo and inside here we're going to be getting the logo from dot slash images for slash logo there we go and then below this we're going to have a number with a few list items of one two three and four and five so we're going to have a, an another list with five list items and then because these links are not linking to any particular page you can have them in as buttons or you can have them in as anchor tags but with a hashtag href which means it's just going to be linking to the current page that it's in but let me i'm going to i'm going to prefer to use buttons here so this one says home and then about and then this one says contact then this one says blog and then this one says careers and then we can remove this and then this is going to be our call to action let me just check how the the navbar looks when it's open so careers where is the let me check oh, it, it only appears on large screens so it only appears on large screens 
and then it's one two and three so that means that this needs to be in a separate div i mean i can have it separately so that this becomes the first item then the second item and then the third item might be a button that says request invite and then let's go ahead and let's grab this section so let me see we have next generation so here up to here is going to be a section and then this part the text here is going to be inside an article and then on top of it we're going to have another article which is going to be our hero image and in this case our hero image is going to be this first one this one right here i don't know whether these are two images but let me just check let's check inside our images folder we need the bg intro desktop and bg intro mobile and let me see is this the mockups i think the mockups are the the um the phone here i think that's what it is so let's go ahead and let's do this because we have the bg intro mobile and desktop we have the mobile and desktop i don't want to toggle using css so i'm just going to have a picture tag here and then add in my source and the source takes in a media here and i'm going to say that for a min width of about uh 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 i'm forgetting the syntax for this let me see source this one okay okay i was correct so for a min width of 768 pixels then i want this to come from dot slash images and it is called bg intro dash desktop dot svg and then uh for devices that are less than 768 pixels then i want my default image of dot slash images for slash bg intro mobile to show up and then let's see so if we have the picture tag and then we also have the mockups so i'm going to add another image here and this is going to be forward slash images forward slash mockups this one so image mockups dot png and then let's see we have the h1 so let's go ahead and structure this this is going to be our h1 this is going to be a paragraph and then this is going to be a button so button there we go and then this next section says why choose easy bank and then let's see so it has the top and then one two three and four so cards technically so let's do this I'm going to grab all of this cut it out place it inside a section and then this is going to be an h2 and you know what let me do this let me grab let me see why choose easy bank and then the text so grab this all up to here and then this is going to be an article and then paste this in and then this is going to be an h2 and then this is going to be a paragraph and then remove this space and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the rest of this up to here and then above this we're going to create a div and then this div is going to be the parent for our cards so inside each of these cards is going to be an article so it's going to be structured in the following way we're going to have an article and then on top of this we have an image first so img forward slash img dot slash images forward slash should be banking what is the what is the icon come on banking banking are you serious so the image here should be the icon online image and then what we're going to do is below this image we're going to have an h3 which says this text and then this is going to be a paragraph oops right up to here cut it out place it inside a paragraph and then we're going to have the same structure for this second one as well so place it inside an article this is going to be an h3 that says this this is going to be a paragraph that says this and then we're going to have an image on top of this the image is dot slash images and it's called icon dash budgeting there we go and then this third one so place it inside an article we're going to have an image on top of this that's coming from dot slash images forward slash icon dash onboarding there we go and then cut this out place it inside an h3 cut this out place it inside a paragraph and then finally for this one grab an article 
and then on top of this we're going to have an image that's coming from dot slash images forward slash icon dash api there we go and then this one cut this out place it inside an h3 and then grab this and place it inside a paragraph and then let's go ahead and let's build up this other section so the latest articles one two three and four cut this out and place it inside another section and then this is going to be an h2 and then let's see so it's a deal let's see so let us add articles and then it represents this okay so let's let's see this structure so it's an image and then the text is pushed inwards and then it is white in color so that would mean that would mean the following i'm going to have uh let me see let's see let me see let me grab all of this up to the bottom place it inside the div which is going to be the parent because i'm going to be using css grid on the parent and then we are going to have i just want to structure this first one and then we're going to build up the rest so let's have an article on top of this article we're going to have an image that's coming from the slash images forward slash should be which one is it uh let me see let me see which one is this currency yeah should be should be currency.png let me see the currency was the currency this one image currency dot jpeg and then because this text is pushed inwards i don't want to do it for every single one right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this and place it inside another article i can use a div but let me use an article and then this is going to be an h3 and then this is going to be a paragraph let me see yeah that's looking correct and then basically we're going to do the same thing for these other ones so grab this place it inside an article grab this place it inside an h3 h3 not h1 and then grab this and place it inside a paragraph and you know that's even wrong this should be inside another article so article and then on top of this let me see yeah on top of this we're going to have an image that's coming from dot slash images forward slash uh what is the second one i don't know that you uh let's see treat yourself let me see what what image is this restaurant that should be the correct one and then do the same for this one so cut it out place it inside an article on top of this let's add an image that's coming from dot slash images forward slash take easy bank this should be plain so the plain image plain grab this place it inside an h3 grab this place it inside a paragraph and then finally for this one cut it out place it inside an article on top of this let's have an image that's coming from the slash images for slash should be confetti below this let's paste this in i do not it should be inside an article paste this in and then grab this place it in the inside an h3 and then grab this place it inside a paragraph and that should be our main section and then next we're going to have our footer so for the footer i'm going to grab this text here up to here cut it out and place it inside a footer element and then let's see so we have the logo on top and then we have this part so how i'm going to structure it is i'm going to have articles so the article for the logo and then the article for the social media icons and then the article for this and then this one and then the final one on the bottom just to keep it like a bit uniform so inside here we're going to have an image this is coming from dot slash images should be the logo uh wait a minute wait 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 uh okay so we're going to have to change something see how this logo is like navy blue we're using the same logo on the footer which is white so we're going to have to change that a bit so let's deal with the second one this second one is going to be an article it's going to be a list item and another list with how many list items five of them so cut this out and paste it here. the second one cut this out paste it here cut this out paste it here cut this out paste it here and one is missing so remove this and then add another list item and paste it in and then we have a button so below this we have an article with a button that says request invite remove this and then we have our copyright on the bottom so cut this out 
place it inside an article and then inside a paragraph that says copyright and we are going to have that oh wait i don't have my social media items. so below this we're going to have an article with a ul with how many are they they are five so five of them and then they're all going to have images oops they're all going to have images this first one is coming from dot slash images forward slash facebook so icon dash facebook and then you know let me just copy this and paste it here and then change this to youtube youtube oops change this to twitter change this one to pinterest at instagram and then this one says instagram there we go and then now we can go ahead and save this and then let's see what we have on the screen in our application and there we go there we go would you look at that looking horrible so now let's go ahead and do this i want to change the font because i've just realized that it's using the default font so let's go ahead and grab the font from our style guide which should be here and our style guide says we're going to be using the public sans with 300 400 and 700 font weights so 300 400 and 700 font weights where are you 300 400 700 use the import copy this and then let's paste it inside our index.css and then you know what we also need to define it on the body so let's define the body to have a font family of public sans with a fallback of sans serif let's define a default font size of 16 pixels this is negligible by the way because tailwind already uses this as the default font size and then let's see what else do we need to do the body has a, a background color the body is not white it is gray so let's check this color let's check the color dark blue lime green grayish blue light grayish blue very light blue let's copy this and then let's paste it inside the body let's say the body should have a background color of this that should be the one and then let's save this and nothing is going to happen on the screen just to confirm or it does oh wait a minute uh let me let me just confirm something let me paste this here let me confirm something background color changes to red okay so i, I don't need to link the index.css file in my in my index.html because the index.css is already being compiled when we run the npx remember the command that we run uh we run this one the npx statement css this one so like the the code inside the index.css is already being compiled so that's looking okay and then now what we need to do is let me remove this and then let's go back into our index.html and let's begin studying it from the top and so we are going to have this inside the header I'm going to give this class name and you know what let me do this so inside the header I'm going to give this a class name of okay not class name class okay that is going to be a problem <laughs> A class of padding or padding on the no let me say padding all round of five push everything inwards let's give this a class of flexbox and item the center and justify dash between which is going to push all the content uh, in between one another but nothing happens nothing happens why does nothing happen what okay okay so that is a problem okay so that means that every time that they change the style then it's going to i'm going to have to manually reload it that is a problem that is a problem for the number we're going to do this for now okay for now i'm just going to say display this as hidden so display none on it and then we're going to toggle it on larger screens and then let's go ahead the button can remain wait a minute how does it look Oh, I didn't add the menu button because I just realized that this button does not appear on mobile screens. So we can go inside this button, give this a class of hidden as well. And then you can see that for large screens, then it's going to display as a block element, meaning show it on large screens, but do not show it on small screens. So it's going to disappear. And then we need to add our menu button here. So here inside here, I'm going to have a div and the div is going to be a button. 
and then the button is going to be an image that comes from dot slash images first slash icon hamburger should be the one there we go which means that now our hamburger hamburg icon should show and we're going to be creating the toggle for it so next let's go ahead into this other section and you know what let me add it as a global style inside my index.css and i'm going to say that let all the images have a max width of 100 percent so that they don't cause an overflow outside of their container and then i'm going to go inside this image so give this a class of width dash full which will make this image go all the way to the end like so and then what i want to do is i want to display this article let me see how should i do this i want this picture tag to display as absolute and you know what? not really not really that's not correct i want this second one to display on top of this so i should go inside this picture tag here give this a class of absolute which should bring it on top i mean not really on top but like it, you can see that now it breaks the flow of the of the content so bring it to the top by zero we should bring it here and then give it um uh should we if i give it a negative z index it's going to go behind behind the the thingy but it doesn't reload there we go so this is what i don't i did not want to happen so let's go ahead and do this i'm going to say it's going to be on the top but look at how it looks in the design see how it looks in the design so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to go into the header and i'm going to give this header a class of relative with a z index of 50 to push it on top of the the image or not or not or not or not hmm let's see so that means that i can go inside here and i can give it a minus z index so minus z index of 10. why doesn't the header come on top 50. why doesn't the header come on top of it hmm i didn't realize we're going to be having problems in the first step okay so oh you know what let me I have this as absolute i don't have the parent as relative so the parent of this image should be this article let me see give this a class of relative let me see what happens should be here okay and then bring it to the minus top minus top of 10 what happens and then give it a minus z index of 10 no that doesn't still work okay so you know what let's do this let's go ahead and let's just go oops removed something this should say top of zero oops top of zero there we go so let's continue standing this other sections and then we're going to fix this in the end so let's go inside this h1 and you can see that it's already messing up with the h1 here can you see it so what we're going to do is inside this article we're going to give this a class a class not class name class of padding y of 20 and then let's go inside the h1 give this a class of text slate 800 let's say let me see it is light in font and it is bigger so text dash 3xl margin bottom of six to push away from the paragraph so that we're going to have this and then let's go inside this article let's give this a class of text dash center bring everything to the center and then let's go inside the paragraph give this a class class of text slate 900 with an opacity of 75 to make it lighter with text dash small and then let's say leading dash relaxed to increase its line height and then let's say margin bottom of eight to push away from the button here so we're going to have this and then what you need to do is let's say that for large screens the text should reach set to the base font of 16 pixels and then we're going to style this button at the end don't worry about it and so now what we need to do is we need to go back inside this article and let me see let me see so the uh let's go inside the parent section so the parent section for this is this one right here and what i want to do is i want to add a padding on the x-axis of five to push everything inwards there we go and um, that does nothing reload yeah i was expecting something like this to happen so let's move the padding x here 
and then let's add it on this second article which has the text add a space here to separate it out so let's add it here there we go so that this text push inwards but it doesn't affect the images and then let's go ahead and deal with this other section so for the second section here let's give this a class of let's say bg gray dash 100 because it's a bit grayed out okay i hate this i don't have i don't like having to reload every single time so this section is a bit grayed out right here and so what we're going to do is we're going to say give this a padding y of 20 and a padding x of 5 to push everything inwards and downwards just a bit and then let's go inside this h to give this a class of let's say oops come on text slate dash 800 let's say text dash 3xl what font did i have on the h1 i have it as 3xl so let's say 2xl for the h2 and then let's go inside the paragraph and you know what? the paragraphs are all going to be styled like this so let me just copy this here and then let me do this let me go inside my index.css and you know what i can remove it from here therefore i can just copy this part and then i can remove this and then I want to define a global style for all the paragraphs. So right below the body, I'm going to say for all the paragraphs, I'm going to use a tenant directive called at apply. And then I'm going to paste in these classes because all the paragraphs are going to be styled like this. You can see that is much easier than having to style every single one every single time. So let's go back into, let's see, into the H2s. So the H2s, and you know what? We can do the same even for the H2s. So for the H2s, they're all going to have the following styles that I've just applied. Where is it? Here. So let me say copy this and then let's paste it here. Let's remove this part. Let's say at apply, remove the quotes. And then what we need to do is we need to add a margin bottom of six to push it away from everything. And you know what? For the paragraphs, I think for the paragraphs, you can say margin bottom as well. Let me just confirm. No, we don't need to have a margin button on the paragraphs. We don't need that. So that is going to be the H2s. And then the H3s are going to be the same, except just one size smaller. So copy this part, paste it here. And you know what? Just copy this entire line, paste it here. And then this is going to be text XL. And then here, we're going to say that for large screens, then the text is going to be 3XL. So make it just a bit bigger. And then here, we're going to say that for large screens, then the text is going to be 2XL. There we go. And the reason why I'm not styling an H1 is because we only have one H1 in the entire document. So there's not really a need to do that. And then now let's do this. Okay, so this part has not reloaded because I'm expecting a padding Y of 20 here, but I'm not seeing it. And the padding X of 5 and I'm not seeing it. Why am I not seeing it? Is it because this is not reloading? Okay, so I hit this it's not reloading for some reason let me see let's see let's go here and let's give this a class of text center and then the for large screens let's say text left okay there we go so now it has reloaded and then let's go inside this first article oh sorry not this one should be the second one so inside this first article let's say um and you know what it's actually only on, on the images so inside this image give this a class of block and mx auto which is going to move it to the center reload there we go and then let's give it a margin bottom of six to push it away from the text and then just copy this class paste it on this image paste it here and on this one paste it here and then on this one paste it here and that is going to apply for all the images would you look at that looking nice and then let's go ahead and style our latest articles so latest articles is here going to give this a class of padding x of 5 padding y of 20 to push everything inwards you can see that our h2 is already styled let me just confirm that it is not pushed to the center it is pushed to the center so let's go here let's say uh, let me check something so this text is not pushed to the center so let's go here give this a class of text center and then i don't know whether on large screens it's pushed to the center let me confirm Okay, so on large screens, it is reset back to the left. We're going to fix that. For now, we can just have this. So latest articles. We're just going to style one of them and then we're going to do copy pasting for the rest of them. So we're going to do this inside this article. We're going to give this article a class 
of rounded large rounded dash large and then let's go inside the second article give this a class of padding or round of eight uh okay i think eight is a bit too big but we're going to see in a moment and then we're going to say bg white with a very slight box shadow so that we can see where it is and there we go so that's why i don't like using tabling css in the cli it breaks it or it usually breaks for me at least it usually breaks okay so we're going to have that you can see that it's looking quite nice right it does look nice however let me just confirm how it looks on very small screens so let's go into the responsive tab let's say the is it this one yeah this does look nice not really nice but it does look fine that's what i mean to say okay we can work with padding of eight all round and then let's do this let's go inside this image let's give this image a class of rounded dash top dash large to give it a rounded border on the top and i do know that i can remove this from here and go into the article and give this article a class of overflow hidden to hide the overflow which is going to just still add the uh the correct border on the image but it's all a matter of preference i don't like doing it like this i like adding the border radius on the image so just say rounded dash top dash large and we're going to have this now let's see i can't see the bottom border radius here and that is probably because now we need to separate these divs so remember how we placed in a div and then articles inside it so inside the parent div i'm going to give this a class of grid and grid dash columns dash one and then give this a gap of about eight to separate the items out and you can see we have a rounded border on top but not on the bottom why do we have that uh, and that is because uh okay i've just realized why we have that i have just realized so i don't want this here yeah i don't want it here instead i want it on this article where i'm going to say rounded dash bottom dash large so that it gives this white article a rounded border on the bottom and then because we have a rounded border on the image then it like it's it curves out you know and then this is going to be our wait a minute wait 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 so i missed the heading i missed the heading <laughs> okay so receive money in any currency with no fees so right up to here this is going to be how do i want to structure this do i want to give this an h2 let me see I think we are going to work with this and then inside this h3 we're going to say this give this a class of text dash small with text slate dash 800 with an opacity of 75 make it lighter so that we're going to have this okay so i don't know how i missed <laughs> i didn't even realize let me see and this is going to be an issue this is going to be a very very big issue when we are scaling it up and you're going to see why i mean not really a big issue but like it's too big that's what i mean it's too big so let's do the same for this so treat yourself da 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 so we need to grab where is it grab this place it inside an h2 h2 come on and then we need to grab this wait where's the title wherever you go wherever you go up to here cut this out paste it inside an h2 and then we need to do a now live a now live so up to here paste it inside an h2 so that we're going to have our titles right there fantastic and then let me grab the classes of the h3 that we have just tell so here copy this and then paste it on this h3 and then paste it on this h3 and then paste it on this h3 and then let's go ahead and grab which one next we win we need to grab this article so let me grab this article and then we don't need any other class so inside the second article should be this one paste it here and then inside here is that correct paste it here uh that is not correct wait a minute that is not correct did i style something wrong 
so this part should be inside an article this part should be inside an article and then we need to grab the classes here paste it inside this article and then paste them inside this article save this let's see what we have on the screen so the styles reset there we go there we go looking nice looking nice and we have that fantastic and then now what you need to do is we need to deal with our footer so our footer is going to be styled in the following way let's go to our footer here give this a class of bg let's say bg slate about that's not it's actually not slate let me just get the, the color for the footer the color for the footer is it dark blue i'm not sure so dark blue copy this let's go inside our index.css on the bottom of this let's access our footer and our footer is going to have a background color of paste this in is that correct let's see let's see let's see yeah that is the correct color and then now you see how our logo disappears what we're going to do is this i'm going to go and copy this logo and paste it so that we're going to have our logo copy and then i'm going to rename this into footer logo so footer dash logo and then now what we need to do into the footer logo dot svg is we need to change the color which is the fill color here we need to change this fill color into white so fff fff which is going to change it into white and then inside our index.html we now need to access the footer dash logo and you can see that now it's going to change the logo into white without affecting our logo on the top that's looking quite nice and then inside the footer we're going to have a padding all round of eight and then let's do this and you know what let's say let's say padding y of 20 and padding x of 5 to keep it uniform and then let's go inside this article give this a class of text center um let me see whether this is going to center the image it doesn't okay so it doesn't so that means that then i'm going to have to do the same thing that i did on the top which is going inside here give this a class of block with mx auto which is going to center the image and then we're going to go inside this ul give this ul a class of flex oops flex and flex wrap so they automatically go into the next line in case they reach the end and item center and then justify center which is going to push everything to the center of the social media icons and then let's go ahead and say give it a gap of about two to separate them out just a bit and then let's go inside the parent article give this a class of margin y of six so margin on the top and bottom of six to separate these items out and then let's go inside this second ul give this a class of let's say text center text dash center let me see and then let's say text dash white okay so that doesn't work i thought it would work since i'm placing it on the parent so here i'm going to say give this a class of text dash white we should change the text and then you know what let's go ahead and do this let's give this a class of flex and item center and justify center and then give it a gap of about four to push them one away from the other and you know what it should be flex call so that they are aligned in column form and a gap of four is a bit too big so let's say gap of two and then let's do this let's go inside here let me just copy this and then using the alt key i'm going to click here and hold down the alt key and click here and here and here and here and then just paste it in so that we, we don't have to keep doing it over and over again and then what we need to do now is we need to go inside the parent article give this a class name a class of margin y of six to increase the margin on this one as well as this one and does that even reset it's not resetting for some reason but we're going to fix it anyway and then we need to have our button our request invite button is here and then finally have our paragraph here which we need to give this a class of text let me say slate about 600 and text the center and then margin y of six there we go so 600 is a bit too dark so let's say 300 let's say 400 reload this 400 is a bit better and then now we just need to deal with our button and so our button for our button i'm going to say this 
I'm going to give a custom class. I'm going to create a custom class called BTN. So for the dot BTN class, because our button is a linear gradient, so let me just check in our style guide. And it doesn't even show. Okay, so we're going to have to do a bit of trial and error. So this is green to about blue. So let's say lime green bright cyan should be this too. Copy this and then we're going to say this. The background color is going to be a linear gradient. Linear gradient. I know this should be background image. It's going to be linear gradient and it's going to be going 90 degrees with these two colors. So the first one is HSL da, 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 up to here. And then remove this text. Place in a comma. Uh, wait a minute. Should add a bracket. And we're going to have that. And then we're going to... Hmm, let me see. Save this first of all, and then let's add the class of BTN on this button on the footer. So give this a class of BTN to see whether it is the correct one. Yeah, it is the correct one. And then now let's go ahead and do this. Let's say at apply text white font bold. Is it actually bold font? Yeah, it's bold font. And then let's say padding Y3, padding X6, rounded dash 4. Let's save this. And we're going to have that as our button looking quite nice. Fantastic. And then now what we need to do is I want this button to move to the center on the footer. So let me go inside this class, inside the article, first of all. And let me say, let me try whether this, this will work. So text center. Okay, it does work. <laughs> okay, so since that works, then let me see. The spacing does look a bit bigger. And it doesn't have as much padding on the top. So let's go back inside the paragraph here, inside the footer, sorry. Let's reduce the padding Y to 10. Reload, come on. I hate when it does not. And then, hmm, let's say this. Let's say margin Y here should be 8. Let's say margin Y here should be 8. And then let's say that should be fine. So 8 here and 8 here. And then the bottom here should be margin Y of 8 as well. And because that it doesn't reload, I, I hate this. Okay, now it has reloaded. There we go. So that's looking much better. And then now what we need to do is we need to scale this up to look better on larger screens. So let's begin doing that with this section here that says why choose easy bank. So with the second section. And the second section is right here. So why choose easy bank? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside this div and then we're going to display these items as a grid. Because what we need to happen is we need them to align one, two, three, and four on larger screens and so what we're going to do is the following oh and we also need to limit all of this okay 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 so let's go inside this div give this div a class of grid with the grid columns dash one with a gap of oh wait a minute did i did i have some bit of spacing here on the mobile mm, let me see how a gap of eight looks like yeah, space them out just a bit. And then we're going to say this. We're going to say that for medium screens, then the grid columns should be two. And then for large screens, uh, okay, let me say that for XL screens, then the grid columns should be four. Let's increase the breakpoint just a bit. Okay, so it, uh, it hasn't reloaded. There we go. And then we need to limit all of this so that it doesn't go all the way to the end. And we're going to do this and notice how the images are still centered. It's because of the MX auto here. So what we're going to do is I just want to do this for the first one where I'm going to say that for medium screens, then the margin left should be auto that should push it to the wait, does that push it to the right or to the left? Come on, it doesn't do anything. Margin right auto doesn't do anything. Okay, so let's just remove this from here. And then let's say that it should be displaying as an inline element. Reload. There we go. So it pushes. Oh, wait a minute. Was I looking at the wrong image the entire time? <laughs> wait, I just have to confirm that. <laughs> okay. Okay, it doesn't look like I was looking at the wrong image. So inline, and then it brings it back to the left. And then what we're going to do is just copy this class, paste it here, and then paste it here, and then paste it here. For the four images which is going to bring everything back to the left on medium screens but on small screens you can see that it is centered 
and so now what you need to do is limit everything so that it doesn't go all the way to the end so inside the parent div here where we have our grid i'm going to have a max width of about 6xl which is going to limit it so it doesn't go all the way to the end and then to push it to the center i'm going to say that let the margin on the x be auto which places equal margins on the left and right pushing everything to the center and then let's say wait can this go to 7xl oh it doesn't have 7xl i don't think tailwind has oh it does have 7xl so let's use 7xl because i think it's just a bit bigger and then notice how we have a gap of 8 which separates all of this out and then we also need to add a max width on this article so that it doesn't go all the way to the end so let's go ahead and grab this and then let's go inside this article give this a class of this paste it in we should bring it here looking nice 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 let's go into the desktop design now to make sure that we're doing everything correctly and we are not doing everything correctly because this text goes to the bottom so we can do that by doing this and i've just realized that i should probably add a margin on the bottom of this article to increase the spacing here let me see how it looks on mobile even on mobile should have a bit of space so let's do this let me say that add a margin bottom of 10. does that do anything i hate i hate that it, it doesn't reset I, I really hate that it doesn't reset. I don't know whether it's just my computer or what. Yeah, let's have that even on mobile. And then what we're going to do is inside this paragraph, we're going to give this a class and say that for large screens, then the width should be a half. So take up half of the, the width of the, uh, the device. Let's see. There we go. So that it goes into the next line. And so we're going to have that looking quite nice. And don't worry about this section we're going to do this section last <laughs> and let's go ahead into our latest articles and so for our late, uh, latest articles we displayed it as a grid somewhere let me see here we displayed it as a grid here and what we're going to do is for medium screens we're going to say grid columns dash two and then for extra large screens we're going to say grid columns dash four which is going to place them in grid there we go and then notice how the the, the images are also not the same height wait a minute I didn't add the the top radius of the images we're going to do that but for now let's just have a max width of 7xl and then an mx of auto to push everything to the center and then let me copy this class on this image and then let's go inside this second image and paste it here and now separate this out because it's a bit crowded and then paste it here as well add a space and then paste it here and there we go should add the border radius on top of each one of them and we're going to have this and then now for for the images i want these images to have a fixed height on large screens and not not even on large screens because we are beginning to display as two grids on medium screens so i'm going to say that for medium screens because i want these images to like have a a fixed height for each one of them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into the top image here and I'm going to say that for medium screens, the height should be 64. Let me see how large that is. Make sure it has reloaded. 64 is a bit big. So let's say 56. 56 looks much better. And so what we're going to do is, I'm also going to give this a class and say that for medium screens, then I want the object to be cover so that the, um, the image doesn't stretch out so for example if i had this has height height 96 then the image would stretch out if i did not have this class of object cover so if i remove it then look at how the image stretches out let me just make sure it stretches out just a bit that is not a good example but when i add it back in then notice how the image now zooms in so that it like it properly fits the container so here let's return this to 56 and then let's copy this class and then let's paste it on this second image and on this third image and on this fourth image save it and now you can see that all the images have a fixed height and then now what you need to do is we need to re re uh, like uh, make this h2 smaller and so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the top where we have our first article should be this one and what we're going to do is we're going to give this a class of text dash xl how small is that that is looking much better and what we're going to do is just copy this and paste it here we can see it's a lot of copying and pasting paste it here and then on the final article paste it here 
which is going to resize them there we go that's looking much much better and you can see that like the website is already coming together right looking quite nice quite nice and then now let's deal with our footer let's see how the footer looks so the footer looks like this okay okay so for the footer we're going to have the following so i'm going to have this as one article or as one div and then this is another div and then another div and then these two are another div mm. i probably should have looked at this design before i built out the foot <laughs> uh, but anyway mistakes happen so let's go ahead and do this let's go inside our footer make this full screen and inside the footer let me say that for uh let's say for medium screens then i want the grid columns to be two so let's display it as a grid first of all and then for medium screens let's say grid dash colors dash two for medium screen let's say gap dash eight and we're going to have one two three and four and five. Oh wait a minute wait a minute it's one two three one two three and the, oh my goodness so that means that we're going to have to do a bit of restructuring here where we are going to grab these three cut them out and then place them inside a ul of their own and paste them in and then copy this and then paste it here we are probably going to have to do that that shouldn't change much it shouldn't change much but hey who are we let's say that for large squares then the grid columns should be four let's see reload this make sure it reloads so one two three four and so now what we need to do is we want this to come here so we're going to have to grab the these two articles cut them out place them inside the div so that this is going to act like one div that has two items save this let's see what you have that this comes here and then we need this one and this one to behave like one div so we need the button so this article as well as this article cut them out paste them inside a div of their own and it should do that okay and so what we need to do is this article is no longer going to be here it's no longer going to have these two ul's instead i'm going to cut this out and create another article here with a class of margin y of eight with this class with this ul inside and we're just going to do that and then now we just need to reset the stylings just a bit and remember how we have margin on the y or, or on the y of everything we're also going to remove that because you can see that this pushes downwards a bit a bit a bit and let's just make sure that nothing breaks that much on mobile screens before we can continue to style them out and here we just need to remove the margin on the y so we we need to have margin on the top no we need to have margin on the bottom sorry move margin on the top we can just have margin on the bottom so that this should remove this space here reload oh it doesn't because now this one should have margin on the top there we go and you know what this should be margin top of eight and margin bottom of two because it has a gap of two here as well i think that should fix it there we go fantastic and so we are going to have this let's now reset the styles here and we're going to say where is it this is the these are the social media icons so what we need to do is we need to reset the styles and we're going to say that for medium screens then the margin should be zero let me see reload there we go and then we're going to copy this class paste it here and then we are going to go into this last div here and how the last div is structured is let me see you can see that this is pushed to the end it's, a, it's as though the text align is set to the right so let's try and do that here in our application by going inside this div giving this a class of let's say that for medium screens then the text should be right let me see whether that is going to text align to the right it doesn't because here let me say that for medium screen that the text should be is there a text align auto no text left it's going to push it to the left but why okay so that means that this should now say text align right okay 
So that happens, but we don't want this to happen. So therefore, we need to limit our footer as well, just like we did here. Let me see. Yeah. We need to limit our footer as well with a max width of, was it 7XL? So let's grab the entirety of this. Ooh, that is going to be a problem. It is going to be a problem because notice how uh, we have displayed grid on the footer. So if I add a max width of 7XL here, then the footer background is not going to go all the way to the end. Look at that. So that means that we need to grab everything inside the footer, cut it out and place it inside a div with a class of max width dash 7XL with a class of MX auto. And then what we need to do now is we need to grab the classes here, these classes here, minus the max width. Sorry, move the max width. And then just paste them inside here. Paste them inside so that now our background color, which is set on the foot, is going to remain intact. And then now these other elements are going to have the same styles. Okay, looking quite nice. Just reload to make sure everything is correct. And then we need to remove the padding X of 5 here. So let me see that for XL screens here. Come on. For XL screens, then the padding X should be 0 to remove the padding X of 5. And let me see, why is this not aligned to the right? Let's go to the bottom here. Oh, it's text center low. So let's say that for medium screen, then the text should be right. We should push it to the right. There we go. Oh, and of course we need to now bring this text to the left. So inside here where we have text center, we're just going to say that for medium screen, then the text should say, it should go back to the left, copy this class and paste it here. We should bring this text back to the left, reload to make sure, reload, come on, really? Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's because of uh, the justify stuff. So we need to do the following as well. So click here and hold down the alt key and click here. And we're going to say that for medium screens, then the, I want the justify. So just justify to go back to the start. Let's see. Of course, it doesn't work because therefore then I'm going to say that for medium screens, then the items should go back to the start as well. Reload, come on, that should work. Okay, there we go. There we go. Fantastic. So that is our footer. And then now let's go ahead and deal with our showcase, which I do not like. So let's see how the showcase looks like. So it's one article and then the other article. And so let's go ahead and do this. We are going to do this. Let's go into our first section, which is right below the header here. Let's give this section a class of grid. Oops. Grid with the grid columns dash one with a gap of eight to begin with. And then let's say that for large screens, then the grid columns should be two. Should display the font here. Reload. There we go. So, okay, so I made a mistake. Yes, I did. I made a mistake. I want this article to appear fast. So, that would mean that I just grab this article here, cut it out, and paste it below this article. But that is going to break something on mobile screens, because now on mobile screens, we want the image to appear fast. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back into this grid and we are going to say this we're going to remove this and we're going to say that for by default on mobile screens we want it to be as a flex box with a flex column of reverse which means the image is going to appear fast flex column reverse okay there we go it hadn't reloaded and then you know what that actually fixes it and then we can see that for large screens then display as a grid and then for large screens then grid columns should be two and then for large screens and you know what? I can just add a gap of eight even on small screens. That's looking okay. So just to make sure, it's going to look like this. And then we are going to make it better looking. Reload. This hasn't reloaded. Okay, there we go. And then I want that on large screens, this text should move downwards. So let's go ahead and say that for large screens, then place items center, which is going to bring this downwards and that upwards just a bit okay 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 
now we need to do something here we need to go back to the header and actually first of all we need to limit this we need to limit this article and this article is the text here we're going to say max with dash 7xl is that enough actually that's not correct is that correct let me say that for large screens then i want the text to go back to the left as well so left and then here let's reduce this to about 3xl tailwind come on stop doing that hmm okay let's say max with dash large i just want to see whether this is going to apply okay so that applies that applies and the reason why i'm not adding a max width on these images is because notice how the design looks so the image goes all the way to the end so i don't want to limit the image and so now let's do this let's increase the size of this h1 it's very small so let's say that for large screens then the text should be let's say 5xl how big is that reload oh my goodness this is really annoying <laughs> let's increase this to xl make it a bit bigger hmm do i want that do i really really want that let me see what mx auto does okay okay there we go that's looking at, that's actually much better let's see digital banking take your financial data da. oh and this needs to have a class of btn remember we added a global class of btn so give this a class of btn which should apply the styles here correctly and then let's see i want this image to move upwards and i want these to move inwards so what i'm going to do is inside the header i'm going to give the header a max width max width of 7xl and an mx of auto as well to push this inwards so that we're going to have this let me see why is this pushed inwards so much it's because of what padding y of five so let's say that for extra large screen that the padding x should be zero should bring it a bit to the left and now it is completely on the line there we go okay so that we're going to have that and then now what we need to do is this let me give this header a bg of white because i've just realized that the header has a background color of white it has a background color of white. oh and you know what that might actually fix the error that we were having in the beginning and notice how like the the max width only applies up to where the end, the header ends that is the same logic that we did on the footer so we're just going to grab everything inside here up to the closing header tag let's it inside the day with a class of bg dash white actually not that's not correct this div okay you know what, let me just display the div first of all it's actually even confusing me and then what you need to do is the max width and this should apply on should apply on this div so give this a class and paste this in which should now uh, ch change the styles a bit which means that now we need to grab the styles here up to here cut this out paste them inside here remove this bg of white from here actually that's not correct remove this class of padding x0 from here and paste it here wait is that correct is that correct so if i remove this from here and add it here should apply still okay okay there we go so that is our header now let's go where we have our absolutely positioned image let's give this a minus minus top of 10 should now go behind minus top 10 why are you here there we go okay so i did the background image fixed it so that now let's say margin top of 20 and then let's see you know what? let's style it for mobile screens first of all because i need to see how this looks so actually no, this looks fine even on mobile what we need to do now is just display it correctly for larger screens and for large screens let me see so it's upwards and outwards so let's say this let's say this let's say 
let's say minus top 32 and then let's say minus right of 20 to push it outwards reload there we go there we go but not so it introduces a horizontal scroll bar we're going to fix that in a minute for now let's do this i want that this tile should apply only on large screens because i don't want it to move it to, to the right on small screens so on small screens this is always going to be positioned like so and then on large screens then it's going to be positioned to the minus right of 20. that's looking much much better and then now what we need to do is let me just remember what we needed to do let me just remember mm. yes we need to cancel the overflow we need to remove this overflow so let's go into our css and then inside the body inside the body here we're going to say at apply and we're going to say that for large screens then we want the overflow overflow to be hidden so basically don't show the oh, oh wait a minute we don't want the overflow on the x-axis because we want to be able to scroll downward still so we're going to say overflow dash x-axis to be hidden which means that now we can scroll up and down but we can scroll left and right and then now finally let's deal with our header our navbar and our navbar looks how when it is open let me just remember so it's, it looks like this when it's open so let's go back into the mobile design and we're going to have this let's place this here and let's go ahead and start telling our navbar and our navbar should be this one here and now it's not going to be hidden except that i was just placing it to be hidden so that we can tell out the rest of the of the like um the the thing is that we had so let's say this and you know for this i'm just going to style it out manually not okay not really manually but inside our index.css and right above the body i'm going to access the navbar and i'm going to say at apply and i'm going to say i want it to be absolutely positioned absolute and i want it to the top by 20 with a width of 11 out of 12 so about 90 percent let me see how this looks you know what let me place this here and we're going to have that and then we're going to say this give this a class of bg white there we go let's give it a z index of 50 so that it is placed above the content and then let's say give it a padding all round of eight with a rounded of large with a shadow of 2xl what is the drop shadow hmm shadow 2xl let's say shadow 4xl is there shadow 4xl no there isn't shadow 3xl should be there no there isn't so shadow 2xl is the largest and then let's say this let's go inside the navbar and inside the ul's let's give this a class of flex so let's say at apply flex i can type flex okay and then let's say flex dash call and then let's say items the center and justify the center center which should bring everything to the center there we go just give it a gap of four to separate them out reload to make sure it's separated out gap not gap up gap of four there we go there we go and then this box shadow is a bit too small for me so let me add it manually so let's say give this a box shadow of let's say 10 pixels 10 pixels 10 pixels and let's say rgba 0.4. how large is that too small let's say 50 pixels each okay still too small 100 pixels okay 100 pixels hmm let's say 500 pixels doesn't work it doesn't work i think uh, i think it's because i'm giving it some uh weird values anyways okay so you know what this is the horizontal so i want it to zero on the horizontal and then on the vertical i want 100 pixels and 100 pixels on the blah so let's see so let's change this to 500 pixels let's see so it's now here so let's bring it to 300 bring it about here 200 right there that is much better because that is how like that is almost how it looks in the design but i think the blur radius is a bit bigger 
so let's bring it the, the blur radius to about 300 let's make this to about 0 0.8 to make it just a bit darker okay and you know what probably this tells us should be applied when the number is open only and so we are going to have this looking quite nice now this is when the nav bar is open so what you need to do is i want this styles to only apply when the nav bar has a class of open so nav bar dot open so that when i save this then this is going to disappear and you can see that it doesn't really disappear because now it appears here and what we need to do is we need to make this offset so that it goes away from the screen so i'm going to say access the number once again and i'm going to say add apply and i want it to be absolutely positioned and then let's say let's say minus left or full to bring it away from the left to bring it like uh not away from the left but like completely out of the screen and then we are going to say that when the number is open here bring it to the left by zero and then that is going to be how the number behaves and then now we can go inside our intercept html we can give this a test class of open and we should see our number there we go and not not even left of zero should be left of auto should be correct there we go so that it is now it adds the proper margin on the left and right so now let's go ahead and do this we need to access our button here so that when you click on it then the number shows okay so remember how we're going to remove this from here and remember how we linked our script file on the bottom right here we can go into our index.js and then you can say let's grab the navbar so const navbar is equal to document dot query selector oops query selector we want to select the nav element and then we need our menu button so const menu button is equal to document dot get element by id and i'm going to give it an id of menu button so let me give it this id before javascript throws us an error so right where is it come on should be this one give this a class not a class sorry but an id of menu dash button and save this and so we're going to be adding an event listener on the menu button so that when you click on it then we toggle the class of open on the number so we're going to say menu button dot add event listener and we're listening for a click event on the menu button and then we're going to pass in our function here and we're going to say that when you click on the menu button then you want to toggle the number so number dot class list dot toggle class list dot toggle and we want to toggle the class of open on the number so you can save this and then let's try it out you can see that now this is working so because it's toggle you can click on it and it appears and disappears appropriately so now what you need to do is let's just add a very slight transition here and i'm going to say transition dash all with a duration of 500 that is much better and so now what we need to do is just make sure that it scales up properly on larger screens so on large screens this is how it's going to look see that it looks quite nice on larger screens except that i want this to disappear on large screens and then i want this to move to the right and so let's go ahead and do that so on large screens let's go inside our index.html and inside this div we're going to say that on large screens so class equals to and say that for large screens then this should display as hidden so that now it disappears and you can see that this goes to the right and then this needs to have a class of btn so right here let's say btn we should restyle that there we go and then we need to display our navbar so right here and so how we're going to do that is we're going to add a media query here and we're going to say that for large screens then the left should be zero it's meaning it should bring it back to the left on large screens there we go and then we're going to say that for large screens then position this as relative no longer as absolute we should bring it here and then now what you need to do is this we need to go inside the ul and we're going to start for large screens then the flex should be row we should now place this in row form and let me see let me check something let me check it's a bit lighter font 
a bit lighter font on large screens so let's do this let's do this let's access the nav ulli and is it the li's only the li on the button so the nav ulli button and then let's say add apply text slate dash 900 with an opacity of dash 75 and you know what i only want this test to apply on large screen so let's say that for large screens here and then for large screens here so that now this is just a bit lighter and do not let's even make it smaller so let's say for large screens then text small make it just a bit smaller and then let's increase the increase the gap here and say that for large screens then the gap should be eight how large is that yeah that is much better and then now what we need to do is this let me add a very slight box shadow on the header because this is barely visible so inside the header here let's add a very slight box shadow so shadow there we go like just to accentuate it a bit and hmm let me try something let me say shadow shadow slate dash 200 make the box shadow even lighter let's say 50 or 100 make it even lighter and you know what slate is very slightly blue let me change it to neutral let me see make it very light 200 it's a bit of it's a bit of like trial and error as you can see to get it how you want it to look like and let's bring it back to 100 yeah, let's just leave it at 100 mm, it's bothering me 200 oh my god it's bothering me it's bothering me okay okay let's leave it at 200 and then now what you need to do is this notice how like if you are to scale this up if the number is not open then nothing really happens right but if you scale this up with the number open then it breaks it breaks so let's fix that as well and we're going to do this let's go back into our index.css and then we're going to be accessing this class of open where we're going to say this so right here we're going to say that for large screens then the background should be transparent bg transparent and then for large screens then take this back to relative to have a position of relative for large screens then the left should be zero for large screens then bring it back to the top of zero for large screens the width should be auto and then for let's say for large screens then the padding should be zero and then let's say for large screens then the rounded should be none and what we're basically doing is just resetting all the styles that we had here and then save this and before you save it let me see whether i can remove the, the box shadow so let's say for large screens then the shadow should be none i don't know whether i can remove it from here or whether i have to add my own custom media query so let's save this and okay okay our box shadow still appears our box shadow still appears so let's go ahead and do this let's say at media and let's add a min width of 10.4 pixels which is large screens let's access the nav and the dot open and let's say the box shadow should be none which is going to remove our box shadow and there we go looking quite nice and now you can try it out you can see that if the number is open and you scale it up then it resets properly and then if the number is not open then it resets properly as well and would you look at that that is going to be our project that is going to be our project looking quite nice oh this should align to the left that should align to the left so latest articles so latest articles here let's say that for medium screens then text dash left and a lot of just realized i've just realized that this text is a bit too small the text is a bit too small here and here oh wait a minute this is an h2 this is an h2 but it looks smaller than this one what this is an h2 how 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 okay remove this from here it's because i added a custom style yes make it bigger and then let's fix this from going all the way to the end so right around here let's grab this 
place it inside an article with a max width of 7xl with an mx of auto and then paste this in we should now limit it right there and that's looking quite nice it does look nice so yeah that is going to be the project you can deploy this if you want okay and you know what let's just go ahead and deploy it so let's go ahead let me create a github repository close this and close this and then we can close this now just make sure that we don't have any errors okay close all of these close them down and close this and then now what i'm going to do is i'm also going to log into netlify where i'm going to deploy this so i'm going to create a new repository and i'm going to call this repository easy bank so easy bank dash yt and then it's going to be a public repository so let's go ahead and create repository and then let's log into netlify and then inside here let's copy this and then let's just say git init which is going to initialize an empty git repository here inside our work folder and then i'm going to say uh okay before you continue <laughs> before you continue you don't want to commit a thousand items here because these thousand items consist of node modules as well you can see node modules so before you continue go into your git ignore and then add the node modules folder <laughs> the node modules okay so it was a good idea to call to show the the committing this to github so what that does is that it ignores the node modules folder you can see that now we only have 37 items okay and then let's continue and do the let's say git add all and let's say git okay add okay git commit dash m let's say initial commit and project complete and then let's say git remote add origin and then pasting the link to our remote repository and then git push dash u origin main which is going to push it to this repository and then once it pushes then we can deploy it so just give it a moment and so there we go and then once we reload this then you can see that we have our commit here with our landing page readme and then now let's go ahead and just say add new site and import existing project from github And then the repository is called easybank-yt. Let's search for it. And searching, searching. And there we go. And then let's just go ahead and say deploy site, which should deploy our website correctly. So just give it a moment. And then let's change the site name here into TSB. Let's say easybank. There we go short and sweet and then it should have deployed so let's test this out okay it's not deployed yet so let's check our deploy so starting up still starting up okay okay so i'm going to cut to when this has deployed because i don't want to wait here for a moment because the last time that i tried to deploy it, it had an issue where like it's deployed the next day literally after 24 hours so i don't want to like uh keep on recording so i'm just going to stop the recording and then once it deploys then i'm going to show you that it has deployed okay so this is our website right here so let's open this up and we're going to see that we have our easy bank looking quite quite nice there we go so this is going to be our website let's copy this link let's go into front end mentor let's say submit solution let's say paste in the live set url copy this paste in the repository url and let's give it the title of mobile first easy bank landing page in in let's say vanilla html and tailwind wind css always one character remaining <laughs> let's deploy this oh sorry submit it and then we can close this down we can close this and we can close this and there we go you can see you can go ahead and view solution it's probably going to be like uh not what you expect with our solution okay here it is so we almost got it we almost got it probably just made everything a bit bigger oh you know what what would have fixed it if we made um if we not made but if we reduced the max width then it probably would have made it like almost to the t 
So that's looking quite nice. Can make the H1 bigger. We can make this section bigger. Yeah. And then we can go ahead and also make the footer just a bit smaller. But yeah, that does look nice. And that is going to be the end of the video. So if you enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.